This is Johnny Herod from the band Wolf Tooth, and you are listening to the Brutally Delicious podcast. You doing all right? Yeah, how are you? Doing all right. Where are you guys at? Indiana? Is that where you're at? Yeah, uh, East Central Indiana. Is it really freaking cold out there now? It is, man. It's it's like uh, 32 out right now, I think. Have you had snow yet? Uh, yeah, last week we had a few flurries, but nothing nothing significant. I was watching some football game the other day, Michigan State, I think it was, and it was totally covered. Oh, uh, I'm not ready for that. I'm in Richmond, Virginia, and I'm not – I mean, we won't get it that bad, but I'm, we'll get some, but I'm not ready for any of it. Um, I'm in Richmond, Indiana. I know. That's funny. I saw that when I was doing the research. <laughs> yeah. Right on. So I guess we could just go ahead and jump in and get started. First of all, congratulations. How did the uh, the deal with Napalm come about? It was so weird. Um, so we released our second album, Valhalla, in uh, May 2020. So it was well into the shutdown. And right. we were kind of bummed out because uh, we couldn't you know, tour. We didn't know what was going to happen. So two weeks after that came out, uh, we get this email in the middle of the night from Napalm Records and, you know, asking questions and stuff. We're like, is this for real? Like our album just come out. So it was a pleasant surprise to to hear from them. We hadn't shopped anything or, right. you know, it just come out and that was it. That's got to make so, you feel pretty good, right? It did. Yeah. Because, I mean. Like, hey, we're doing something right. Yeah. We just kind of progressed up a step each each album with the label and so are uh, you gonna are they gonna re-release this one through them or are you guys doing something new uh you mean the the first two albums yeah uh yeah we're we're talking about maybe a re-release down the road here so, so you might hear some news about that and you're working yeah. on new material then for a third through them yeah that comes out friday our uh blood and iron will be our first record with Napalm. Did you, what was the writing process like then for that record? Because obviously some of it had to have been written through the nonsense we're going through, right? Was it different? Oh yeah, to the last totally. Uh, we, it was kind of a silver lining to the, the shutdown and not being able to play out live because we could just, you know, practice a couple times a week and uh, we wrote it then, you know, we didn't have any pressure of having to, tear down the gear for a gig or anything like that. We can just focus on uh, just nothing but writing. Did the process go easier then? Did you find it like more yeah, creative I mean, and better? Yeah. Um, we, we practice a couple of times a week and uh, you know, Chris, Chris writes most of the riffs. So he, he would uh, come through with the few and send them during the week. And then, you know, we would have something worked out by the, by the time we got together and uh, yeah, it, the songs come together pretty fast once we we got the bones of them, you know. You guys like write in the in the traditional sense, like everybody in the same room bouncing ideas off each other, or is it more? Um, I know you're probably pretty close to each other, so maybe you could take advantage of it that way, as opposed to sending stuff back and forth by email. Yeah, we're all within like a half hour, forty minutes of each other, so it's it's not hard to get together in person. Um, that's usually when it happens. Uh, somebody will have a main riff and then, and then we'll just build on it. And, uh, you know, if we get, we get tired of it or bored with it, we'll just move on to something else and come back to it next time, you know, just whenever it presents itself. I think in the long run, that traditional way of bouncing stuff off each other makes it sounds, I don't know, I guess the word is more organic or more. Yeah, totally. Does that make sense? Totally. Yeah. Uh, you know, you really work that chemistry when you're in the room together, as opposed to, to sending files, you know, online. I know a lot of bands do it like that, but I, you know, we're old school. So we, we kind of like to be in the same room and, uh, you know, hearing the burn on them amps and yeah. getting it live, you know. When you guys are writing, I don't know if this really applies to stoner music or this kind of doomy music, but are you guys writing with the live show in mind or are you guys writing a song for the song's sake and then adapting the songs to the live setting? No, we, we pretty much write the songs and then learn how to play them after they're done <laughs> and recorded. <laughs> Especially with the, our singer, he uh, we write all the music 
And then we don't hear any of the lyrics or know what any of them are until we get the first, you know, oh, really? uh, studio. Oh yeah. Studio song back. So, so that's always pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, when, once it's all over, he has to learn how to sing and play everything, you know, for the first time. So it's, it's kind of unique in that, right? Have you ever gotten songs back? You're like, what the hell just happened? What am I listening to? No. Uh, I mean, we love Chris. He's, he's just really good at what he does. And, and it's always just kind of a awesome, awesome feeling. I don't, I don't, I rarely hear things I don't like that come from him vocally. That's good. I mean, that's an amount of trust, I guess. That's pretty. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. We've, uh, we've known each other and played together for so long, not consecutively, but, uh, I mean, we go back 25, 30 years, all of us. Oh really? So, So yeah, yeah. We know each other really well as far as life and music. What, um, and I don't know if this is going to apply either, but is there something you want your fans to take away from after listening to a Wolf Tooth record or seeing a Wolf Tooth show or just like a takeaway? Um, well, uh, the content of our music is, is pretty much about myth and lore. Right. And uh, so it's we offer kind of an escape for everybody to uh, get away from all the daily which, hubbub. Which in the end is absolutely needed right now, right? I mean... Totally, oh, totally, yeah. With all the shit yeah. we're going through, that's the stuff you need. Yeah, who wants to hear about that in your music? I, you know, music's always been an escape for all of us, so why not provide that for anyone who wants it, you know? So, I mean, at, at some point I get it because music is definitely cathartic, especially heavy music. I think mm-hmm. in a way, you know, and I get where people are coming from, where they're, you know, getting their demons out of doing whatever. But there's also something to be said for, you know, the escape side of it. I think that's pretty cool, too. Yeah. And it, and it's all in fun, too. That's that's why we still play after all these years. We just we just like to have fun. You know, did you ever imagine you'd still be making music and doing this? No, uh, far along? That, that's kind of funny because uh we started this band in 2017 as we called it our retirement band because <laughs> we we've been in the trenches the whole you know for 20 years or whatever and uh you know been trying to trying to get out of here and stuff and then uh it's like anything else in life when you quit giving a shit and quit trying so hard like you know something happens so um it, yeah it's it's kind of weird how all this come about cuz we we got together just to have fun on the weekends. And I mean, you know, we're all blue collar guys, got some kids and right. all that. So, and I guess, I guess we wrote some good stuff cause it just kind of accelerated and turned it back into this thing. And here we are. <laughs> and, and the music business, you know, you've been in it so long and I've been around it as long as well, but the music business has changed so much. I mean, now it's not just writing songs and handing out flyers and playing gigs right now you've got to be the right. social media manager and oh yeah doing all this weird stuff so i mean the changes you've seen are pretty amazing right yeah it's kind of like uh you know the start we were there for the start of the internet we grew up uh when nobody had cell phones and we went outside to play and all that so right. this whole aspect of the music side of it is we're getting used to it or we're, you know we're not we're not really out there as far as selfies and posting content all the time and recording everything we do. We, you know, we, we're old like that. So, and it's difficult with, you know, like you said, jobs and kids and life and. Oh yeah, totally. But on the other hand, it's making things like this easier, you know, a hundred percent. So there's highs and lows, I guess with, with all of it. Right. Cause I guess back in the day, like 20 years ago, 25 years ago, I mean, the only way you found out about, bands like yourself are you know through the grapevine or the tape trading or going to shows or yeah. something like there was no yeah, you know, yeah we've, wa- we've watched it kind of evolve all this time and it's it's different and i think the music business has kind of evolved as well so now everybody's doing like this single and i applaud you guys for doing a full record because a lot of people are doing this you know single model oh yeah like a single every six weeks and I think what's missing is, you know, I'm old school, just like you said, you are, I enjoy it. It's, it's a ritual. It's a practice to get the album and, you know, go to the store, buy the album, sit down, listen to it the way you wanted it to be sequenced and read the liner notes and read the credits and do yes. all that stuff. That's a thing. Yeah. And uh, with our album, the, it has liner notes and all the lyrics are in it and everything else, the new one. So uh, 
you know, maybe give a, a few of us that are left something that I look forward to, to, to open up and read, you know? I know. Cause I mean, people like my <laughs> son, they just want that 99 cent single and then they're moving on. And I keep trying to tell them, no, 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 no. You need to sit down by the record. Cause there's an art to sequencing as well. Right. I mean, you guys spend a lot of time trying to figure out what song goes where. Right. Right. And then, you know, that gets lost in this whole weird single model. And I know you have to release singles to stay relevant in, in this time, but I think the record for, especially for older school people, is, is going to be great. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to the feedback from it. Are you doing it on vinyl as well? Oh, yeah. It's on vinyl, uh, CD, digital, all that. Nice. And it's coming yeah. out this Friday? It comes out this Friday, December 3rd on Napalm Records. And if fans want to, did I lose you? No, I'm here. Oh, shoot. It just blanked out on my screen. Hold on one second. Sorry. I don't know where you went. Oh, there you are. Sorry, my screen just blanked out. Oh, if no uh, fans want to find you, uh, where do they find you? Just Wolf Tooth? Uh, at Wolf Tooth Metal is all our <laughs> social media. At Wolf Tooth Metal on Instagram, Facebook, uh, okay. all that, YouTube. So the another quick question I had that's on my list here, and I'm kind of skipping around, but when you're playing show, have you played shows yet? Have you played live since this whole thing has? We've played one time. What was one that One time like? here in our hometown. Uh, it was about three, four weeks ago. What was that like yeah. finally being back on stage? Uh, it was pretty awesome, really. Uh, you know, we, we played really tight. We right. had a lot of time to practice. <laughs> a lot of, did you have a lot of nerves being back out there after so long? Uh, not really. I, it's just, uh, I was just, I was more worried about how much merch we were gonna sell or right. who was watching that while we were playing but uh no nah, it's it's like riding a bike for uh, for me anyway i don't think any of the other guys were nervous right well, that's cool but what i was going to ask you is though so this long in the business i'm sure you're finding people bringing like multi-generations to your shows then right i mean you're getting people yes. your age bringing their kids that's got to be pretty cool too right yeah it's a good feeling uh you know ushering in the the new generation of little metal heads um, I think a lot of our music, per, uh, pleases, uh, the, the classic rock crowd, older, yeah, older folk, and then people, you know, twenties, thirties. And, and even we have a lot of kids too, that, that like it. I mean, uh, music's pretty simple in the aspect of like, no screaming, we don't cuss, you know, it's all, you can understand it. And it's, I, th- I think kids latch onto that maybe a little more. Right. And like we talked about earlier, the escapism and the, that whole fantasy thing is really yeah, cool yeah. as well. So it's, it's all fun. <laughs> right. It's not uh, violent and not that there's yeah. anything wrong with that because I listen to a lot oh, of no. heavier stuff. That's as all well, I but, listen to. But uh, right. yeah, you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Um, did I miss anything you wanted to cover? Because that's pretty much run down my list. Uh, no, just uh, you can buy the album on Amazon, iTunes. Uh, Let's do it on Spotify, Amazon Music. Did I already say that? Yeah, you said that, but please say all it again. The, all the digital digital outlets you can buy it on, or you can go to uh, Napalm Records website and order it. There's uh, shirts. There's a new uh, Blood and Iron shirt, and they have a, a couple different versions of the vinyl, along with the black and then the CD. And then uh, you can go to our band camp, wolftooth.bandcamp.com, to uh, find our T-shirts and uh, – uh, media of our first two albums and blood and iron will be on there also coming up. So, and please go out and buy merch. Yeah, totally. Merch puts gas in the tank when we, <laughs> right. when we get going again. Do you guys have any uh, plans for touring yet? Or is it too early? Uh, we do for next year, 2022. Uh, we're looking to, to go to Europe, look for an announcement nice. on that coming up. And then we're trying to, there's a couple more things we're trying to, get together and plan out for maybe spring and maybe summer. So I know I said I had ran out of questions, but I'm just talking, but do you, sure. is there a weird dynamic now with trying to plan for a tour with all this nonsense going on? Yeah. It's uh things are way different in Europe than they are here. So yeah. that's kind of why it's been up in the air and there's, it's a lot of work to, it's a, it's different over there. I've never been there, but I hear it's different uh, as far as their, restrictions and uh right. rules um here it'll it shouldn't be too bad unless 
I don't know. I think something else is going on now with some kind of other. Yeah, I saw that. But I will tell you, I went to my first show in two years last night. Yeah. I I went and saw Ingve and. um, Nice. Yeah. I mean, I wish the crowd would have been better. It was only like 150 people there, but it was fantastic. And it was great just to be, you know, in that you forget how much you, I mean, I knew I missed it, but you forget how much you truly miss. Oh yeah. You know, the, uh, your chest starts vibrating a little bit and like, Oh shit, this is home. I got my first concert a couple weekends ago. I went uh, to see Gojira, and that was my first concert since hell, uh, late nineteen or early twenty twenty. So I was stoked to get back in the room and feel feel the hum, you know, and yes, just be there, be present with it. So be with you know the community because there's a a massive community. Oh yeah. I think you miss you miss you don't even realize it, but you miss it terribly when you're. It's just one big family. You yeah, know? and I think nobody from the outside can even understand that. But right, you know, even though you know I have a beer with these people, I don't normally see them except at shows. But when they're not there, I'm like, shit, I miss mm-hmm. that guy. Yeah, <laughs> very odd stuff how that all works out. I I feel that man. Anyway, that's all I've got. Thank you, my friend. Hope that wasn't too bad. No, not bad at all. This is my first uh, podcast ever, so thank oh, you. nice. <laughs> It'll probably be up the next week, middle of next week. Okay. I'll send uh, Natalie all the info and we covered everything you need, right? Anything I missed? No, I think we got it all. I try and keep it casual with a couple bullet points and we just see where we end up. Yeah. Sounds good. Awesome. You have a great week. Happy holidays. Stay safe. You too. Be well. All right. Bye. Hello out there. Yes. Hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you!